Hello, Monrom here. In today's video, I want to show you my ultimate sister of battle build guide for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader that utilizes high fire rate weapons, namely heavy bolters and laser guns, as well as flamethrowers to shred heretics and the unholy to pieces. Witness the sacred power of the Adeptus Sororitas, mercilessly rooting out spiritual corruption in the name of the Emperor, raining holy metal upon heresy and unworthy to purge the evil of the arch enemy from existence. The most notable feature of this build is its immense firepower with absolutely no equal. A barrage of sacred bullets rends the flesh of demon, xenos and psyche alike. Everything standing in your way will be hit by multiple solves of massive projectiles, deleting their puny bodies without issues. And to make this all possible we are going to utilize supportive actions by other classes high ballistic skill and multiple aim improving items to unleash highly precise attacks on enemies, despite using barrages. This combined with multiple ways to reposition with dash, gun and run as well as potential officer abilities make for a great exercise in annihilation. And remember, by bolter shell, flamer burst and melter blast, the mutant, heretic and the traitor alike are cleansed from their sin of existence. So has it been for five millennia, and so shall it be unto the end of time. With that in mind, let's go over the build. Your most important stat is going to be the Ballistic Scare, followed by Agility. We also want to boost our strength with one singular point to access the 60 strength heavy weapon requirement set by the heavy bolter through the application of the heavy weapon proficiency perk. Once we get into the second and third class, you will want to further concentrate on ballistic skill, followed by agility and finally some toughness to boost your health pool. Your defenses will mostly consist of dodging bullets, boosted by agility and armor acquired through medium armor. Later on you will be able to find special power armor designed for sisters of battle. As for skills, go for demolition and medicare. Your mobility will provide you with a great way to heal your allies in need or mend your own wounds through the use of medkits. You will also be able to utilize grenades to their utmost potential. For your homeworld and origin we are obviously going with Argenta. Anything else is heresy and will be met with orbital bombardment. Now usually I go over the skills first. However, this time I'm going to go over the weapons first and the required gear for this character to really pop off. On Janus you will find the recoil gloves. Those gloves reduce the recoil of automatic weapons by 50%. This means with more ballistic skill and the recoil reductions, you're going to see a narrowing of the spread of the bullets you're going to shoot. With those gloves and the ballistic skill you currently see on screen, you will basically be always on point with every single shot with this weapon. If you see 2% or 0% besides the enemies and 95% on the target you're currently shooting at, no matter at what distance, you're going to hit them with basically all 8 bullets. This results in some insane damage, because every single flat damage application is going to be added to the 6 to 9 damage, which is then multiplied by multiple multipliers. You can find a wide variety of bolters throughout the whole game. The Imperial Pride, for example, has a recoil rate of 25. But do not dismiss less guns. Less guns are highly precise. They have only a recoil rate of 10, meaning all four bullets are going to hit the target, resulting in some obscene damage right from the get-go. All of those items I'm currently showing you are acquired very early on. This includes the heavy bolter with the heretical follower trait. At the end of Act 1 you can find this heavy bolter, however you won't be able to equip it because you are not a heretic. So how do you acquire this essential weapon for this build to pop off? In Footfall, in the Footfall Atrium, you will find the NPC Hieronymus Doloros. You can talk to this NPC to trade with them. At the relatively early reputation requirement you will be able to obtain the heavy bolter. As for the heavy flamethrower you will be able to obtain this one at reputation level 11 with other really solid items later down the line. Also relatively early in Act 2 you can acquire the blast bolter casing. This will make sure your bolter weapon shots always hit the target if it's a single attack. Here again the heavy flamer. To equip those items you are going to need the strength requirement of 35. So you need to put one ability score improvement, characteristic improvement into strength. Otherwise you won't be able to equip those even with the heavy weapon proficiency. The gunslinger helmet acquired very early on increase your damage substantially because of our high fire rate. We want the medium armor with the highest armor percentage. The stimulant injector gives us additional critical strike chance. Diagnostor gives us additional medicare. 
Cloak of Hatred is an exceptionally strong item for this class. This means the burst fire shot of the heavy bolter counts as an AoE. So every time we kill an enemy, we deal more and more damage. This item is a reputation reward, also acquired by the rep I have shown you previously. And the skirmisher boots, I sadly do not remember where I acquired those, are exceptionally strong on this class, because whenever we deal damage, meaning with every single shot of our heavy bolter, we have a 25% chance to acquire two additional movement points, which we can use to reposition for every attack. Next, let's talk a little bit about the setup. This class lives and dies by the support you provide for the officer and grand strategist. For the officer, the most important abilities are the voice of command, which you apply on Argenta, then take aim to improve the precision of your shots, move and move can later be used to reposition them, and bring it down, as well as finest hour. The finest hour with the first upgrade is going to provide you with a ton of additional AP, Whenever you kill an enemy, you are going to restore MP and AP. So this class is basically going to enable this one to really shine. For the Grand Strategist, you have your zones. But the Officer class is going to be really good with this class. Next, you can look at the Navigator. The Navigator can buff your allies also with the Glimpse of Fate, improving the hit chance of attacks. They can also use Bring It Down and Finest Hour. Next, let's talk about the Soldier Archetype. We're going to start with Run and Gun, giving us a way to obtain a second attack. With this one we can lower the AP cost of our next attack, which also includes the AoE. We also gain MP, we pick up Demolition, then Revel and Slaughter. Revel and Slaughter should only be used when you cannot kill or damage an enemy. It's generally not worth it to use this one if you can use your abilities otherwise. Firearm Mastery you should not use. The momentum you acquire for Resolve as well as Furious Recital, is much better spent on your officer. Next, pick up Muzzle Velocity. This will increase the damage of the first shot of your burst attack by the fire rate of the weapon. Then pick up Ballistic Skill and Swift Slaughter. Swift Slaughter will reduce the kill count from Revel and Slaughter by 1 to just 2. Now it's worth it to use. However, only use it sporadically whenever you cannot really attack because it costs 1 AP. So if you have AP over, use this one. Otherwise, attack. Attacking is always better. Then pick up Ballistic Skill again, get Concentrated Fire. This one is a massive boost to your damage. Just for 1 AP, you can use your Burst Fire basically two times, because your Burst Fire usually costs 2 AP, but this one only 1 AP, so for 1 AP, you're basically doubling the damage. Then we are going to pick up Willpower. This will make sure that we have now 40 Willpower, which is a characteristic bonus of 4. And then we are going to pick up Flinsing Faith. At this point, you should be able to gain access to a Flamethrower. Any melee flame or melt attacks, so not your bolter attacks, will deal additional damage to demons and psychers, as well as xenos. But demons and psychers really get fried. Next, we're going to pick up Tenderize. This one is a stacking damage, flat damage buff, after using an area of attack. So every single hit that hits them will deal more and more damage. Then we have Demolition, Fire Mastery, deal additional damage to the number of attacked targets. Then we pick Second Skin. Second Skin reduces the medium armor penalty from medium armor. This means we get full benefits of dodge. Then pick up Agility, Dash for a free reposition. This one does not provoke attacks of opportunities, which is crucial because at this point in the game you won't be able to shoot in melee range because you don't have the point blank ability. Then pick up Medicare, Agility, Swift Movement to increase your movement points. Pick up Fired Up. So every time we deal damage, we increase our critical strike damage. This one stacks in combat infinitely. Then we have heavy weapon proficiency. So you're going to pick this one up a little bit earlier, but you're going to use it anyway. So no harm there. Then pick up ballistic training. So for additional five ballistic skill, then Medicare and firearm mastery upgrade two for additional fire rate. For the arc militant, we're going to pick up Versatility, which is the passive ability. Whenever we alternate between a single shot and an AoE, so our burst shot, we're going to increase our ballistic skill. At four stacks, we're going to deal more damage. Then we pick up Confined Approach, which can actually increase the damage if targets are hiding behind cover and you cannot hit them. You can activate this one and then possibly hit them. However, in most situations, you're not going to use this one and just use the regular 
versatility. Then pick up always ready, giving you two stacks of versatility, which equals 10 ballistic skill increase. Then steady superiority. So whenever you're going to use your heroic act and you cannot use your heroic act with one of your officers, use this one. Gives you an extra attack per turn that costs zero AP. With the heavy bolter, that's going to cost you three AP without the perk heavy gunner, which decreases the action point by one. So at this point you won't have that, but you can additionally use your heavy attack. Then you get the AP increase, then you're going to pick up the strength. So like I said, at this point you're probably going to get the heavy bolter. So you're going to want to increase your strength score because 35 plus 25 is 60 and you need 60 strength for the heavy bolter. Then pick up heavy gunner. This will decrease the action point requirement of your single fire and burst fire by one. Then pick up ballistic skill, wildfire. Then go for overpower, increasing the crit chance of your heavy weapon attacks as well as the crit damage. Then pick up demolition. Then pick up flash fire. So we're going to reduce the requirements for the decrease in AP cost for wildfire, which is usually four by one. So we only need to acquire three versatility stacks, which is acquired very easily by just beginning the combat. You get two because of a previous perk. Then you attack one time, you have three wildfire decreases to two AP. This will give us basically another attack for free. Then we pick up ballistic skill, then bolt weapon expert. The bolter weapon only has 20 armor penetration. With this one, we get to 30. This one is a huge boost to damage, especially versus mechanical targets and heavy armor targets. Then we pick up critical versatility. For every versatility point, we get 3% critical strike damage. Then demolition, pick up agility, then steady superiority. You can use your soldier and warrior ability, your ultimate ability in the same combat. Next, boost your demolition or medicam. And for the next available talent, you want to pick up dependable. So you're going to stack additional armor based on your versatility. You get tankier and tankier with this one. That's the issue. You're going to need some defensive tools in your arsenal because you're going to deal enough damage, but you're going to also explode instantly. You're squishy. At this point, you already have 70 agility. So what you're going to do is to increase your toughness with the next points because you need to increase your health. Your toughness is only at 30 and you are going to want to engage targets without the fear of getting blown up instantly. So toughness is your priority stat now. The next talent is going to be breaking point, two additional damage and two flat damage ignore. This means if a target has five deflection, you're going to ignore two of that deflection. And additionally, every single shot of your heavy bolter is going to deal two additional damage. Since we are shooting eight times, that's eight times two additional base damage that gets multiplied by multiple abilities. For the next ability, we're going to pick up kick. Kick pushes the target back so we can fire our gun in their face. However, we also want another option with the close quarters training. We can shoot our range abilities in melee range based on just a small penalty to our ballistic skill. You can pick this ability up a little bit earlier if you prefer that. I didn't really need it because this character is squishy anyway and you have your dash ability to get away so it's not particularly needed but if you use the dash ability or don't have an out so if you are stuck between multiple enemies you can use the close quarter combat training to shoot them anyway. For the characteristics, also go again for toughness, then Medicare or Demolition. For the next one, we're going to pick up Discipline because we are playing with two officers and multiple ways to gain an extra turn. We're getting stacks of versatility very easily, which is just more damage, more defenses. Now we already picked two times toughness. You cannot pick more. Ballistic skill is also maxed. So we're going to pick up Agility and again, Agility here. Next, we are going to think about what we want to do with the character. Do we want to increase the damage of our heavy bolter again? Or do we want to gain a little bit more freedom with what we are going to use as our attack with the flame weapon expert, reducing the AP cost of our flame weapon AOE attack by another AP point? We already reduced the AP cost by one because of the heavy weapon proficiency, because we are going to use a heavy flamer. But with this one, we can reduce it two times, so to just one. Or we can use the I will not die perk to increase our wounds by the half point of our character level, rounded up. So at level 30, you're going to increase your health by 15, which is an amazing addition to Argenta's health pool. Another great way to increase the damage is the no, no heresy perk. This one will prevent you from rolling law, Xenos and law warp, but that's not a problem at all. You increase your crit strike chance by 10 and armor 
versus Xenos and Demonic Creatures by 10. And all our allies gain half the bonus. That's an amazing way to increase the group DPS. And with the second upgrade of Steady Superiority, we increase our damage even further by 2% bonus crit strike chance, not damage, per attack. And lastly, we have the Exemplar. There is amazing abilities here you can pick with abilities like Pinpoint Accuracy, Extermination, Cataclysm, Deadly Aim, or Eager for Battle. There is a ton of stuff you can pick here. There is a ton of abilities you already can pick in the early levels that come in very handy now. You can pick up Rapid Fire, Reckless Rush, Rapid Reload, and so on and so forth. And like I said, you don't necessarily need to use a Bolter early on, you can also use the laser guns. I personally think the laser guns are better. You can find things like the Hot Shot Laser Gun, reducing the dodge reduction of enemies with high armor penetration, very good damage, high rate of fire with low recoil, or the Modified Laser Gun, or the Retobi Pattern Laser Gun. There is a ton of options here. Anyway, this sums up the build guide. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you have any questions or remarks, please comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. You can also join the channel membership or leave a donation if you have the spare coin. And check out the Patreon if you are interested in AI-generated art I use for my thumbnails. So, see you next time and bye.